I did it. I found a tree. It's, um, it's pretty wide. It was a little wider than I thought. So I think it might take up half my living room. We'll see. Um... Hi, I'm Jamie. I live in Seattle and I take my two dogs, Ember and Ash, on weekly adventures in the mountains. I hike, camp, and road trip only to places where I can bring my two favorite travel buddies. This adventure had me on the hunt for a Christmas tree within the Mount Baker National Forest. Winter conditions made this more challenging, as I ended up driving around snowy forest roads in search of the perfect tree. Welcome back. It is now the holiday season and the best way to kick it off is by going off into the woods and finding a tree that you think is the most perfect thing ever, then bringing it back home and inevitably having everybody ask why your tree looks like that. <laughs> National forests have this program where you can pay about five to ten dollars and you can chop down a tree within a certain area of that national forest and under certain conditions. I ended up going the day before Thanksgiving just to get ahead of the crowds, especially since this year is very snowy and I knew there was going to be a lot less that was accessible to find a tree. I figured out this trick of figuring out what the perfect height for a tree would be to, that would fit inside my living room. Um, I just held up my ax above my head and I realized that was short of the ceiling. So when I found a tree that was the perfect height, I was ecstatic. Um, and I was so excited that I didn't think to look around the full thing. If I would have done that, I would have discovered that one side of the tree was significantly longer than the rest of the tree that I was actually looking at. <laughs> and I mean, there's branches on one side that are four times longer than the rest of the tree. Like it, it doesn't make sense. And these are things you don't always notice in the woods because Usually the trees that you find are clustered with other trees. So I've learned to embrace the curves of my tree and uh, I found a perfect way to prop it up in the corner of my living room. I have enough lights and decorations for the tree I thought I was cutting down. Um, so I had to get a little creative with how I spread out the lights and those ornaments, but I think I did pretty well. And considering no one's going to be coming to my house anyway, since you know, the pandemic, I think we're good. <laughs> to prepare for Christmas tree hunting, the best place to start is at recreation.gov. It shows you what forest have permits, how much they cost, what rules are in place, and how to get the permits. Permits can be bought directly from the website. However, they need to be printed off and on you as you get a tree. I didn't have that option, so I picked mine up at the ranger station that is in the flagship REI store in downtown Seattle. That REI only sells permits for Mount Baker Snoqualmie National Forests and cost $10 each. They also have copies of the rules and maps you can take. These maps are also available to download online. The next step was deciding what area to focus my tree hunting on. I used the maps available on recreation.gov and looked up hikes in those areas on alltrails.com. I used recent trip reports to see what the road and trail conditions were like. I decided to try the South Snoqualmie Ranger District region first. A lot of the roads were low enough elevation where they'd still be accessible to drive on. And there were a couple of hikes I knew I could do if there was enough time. Spoiler, there was not enough time, so there won't be any hiking in this video.
After getting into the area, it took me nearly two hours of searching around the forest roads to find the tree I would eventually choose and chop down. I did get to see some stunning views while driving, and even encountered a few elk. Fortunately, I have a vehicle that is good for driving in some snow. I drove up a few forest roads as much as I could before it started to get too sketchy. I found one road that had several perspective trees, but I continued further and eventually I had gotten far enough to find a tree that had the perfect height and was more full than the others I had eyed up earlier. I pulled my car over, took out my axe, and started chopping. The trunk was pretty narrow, so it didn't take too long before I was able to push it over. I did it! It's cut! Shit. Now I have to get it on the car. After I got the tree on my car, I headed back home, cautiously optimistic that I had tied the tree properly enough to survive highway speeds for over an hour. Before I had left the forest, I ran into a few older folks who had also gotten a tree and were around a fire having a late lunch. They came up to me to warn me about road conditions, then sent me off with a shot of peppermint schnapps. It was the official start to my holiday season, and it had paired perfectly with the hot cocoa I made myself before. I started driving back. When I got home, the tree was still on the roof of the car, even though it had shifted a bit. Getting it off the car and into the house was surprisingly easy. Getting the tree into the stand was a little more difficult, especially with one side being significantly longer than the other. Some sand weights did the trick in keeping it stable, and then it was ready for lights and decorations. Overall, I'm still proud of it and I'm going to bask in its warm, Christmassy glow for the rest of the year. The next day was Thanksgiving, and I did my best to still have the most festive Thanksgiving while social distancing. I made myself a great Thanksgiving meal with a kit Costco had, and then spent the night Zooming with my favorite virtual quarantine crew while we played endless rounds of Among Us. My family had Thanksgiving that weekend, so I FaceTime with them then. Overall, it's a great Griswold-esque tree. And a tree that has a story is better than a tree that came from a box. At least that's what I'm telling myself. I hope you find ways to enjoy the holidays this year. I know I'm going to keep hiking every week and posting videos. Winter doesn't stop me. So like, subscribe, do all the things, and until next week, see ya!